Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This morning, I want to start by sharing with you a testimony that we received from someone in Uganda after the ministry that we did there. This person said, It had never occurred to me that I could understand the Bible so well and be able to use it meaningfully as I am supposed to. Since you started teaching us the Bible in depth, I realized that there is a great difference between a preacher and a Bible teacher. Everybody should have a chance to learn and interpret the Bible verses the way you have taught us. The greatest benefit for me from your teachings is that now I know how to handle any situation in my life using God's wonderful promises in the Bible. I have a big task ahead of me of looking for and identifying all the promises for all the situations so that I can equip myself in the best way. My life and the way I look at things have changed very much. From now onwards, therefore, I will not allow any dust to settle on God's constitution because you have taught me that one of the ways of cultivating and growing the seed of faith is by reading the word constantly and not only becoming a reader, but a doer as well. Thanks, Cherry, for changing my life. Isn't that a beautiful testimony? You know, one of the reasons we share testimonies is because testimonies, number one, gives glory to God. People glorify God by sharing their testimony. He gets the glory for what he has done. And secondly, it's because it helps other people. It helps other people to build their faith and to be encouraged in their faith that the same thing can happen for them that they heard happened for someone else. And that's why it is important that we share our testimonies to give glory to God and to help other people encourage their faith. Now, last week, we taught the lesson called The Story of the Glory. And in that lesson, we studied that God created man in his own image and in his own likeness and that God gave man three things that were very important. That is God gave man a very high rank or position just below God. As we read in Psalm eight, five, a rank or position. And secondly, God gave Adam and all mankind authority and dominion to rule over the earth and over all the things in the earth. And third, God crowned man with glory and honor. So God gave man his own glory. He actually kinged Adam. He made Adam the king Of the world. But through sin and disobedience, Adam lost all those things. He lost his high rank or position just below God. He lost the authority and dominion to rule the earth. And he lost the glory of God that was on him and in him. And he fell, fell way down below not only the angels, but also below the fallen angels and particularly below Satan. And Satan became the ruler of Adam, the ruler of the earth. And that is how in Second Corinthians 4, 4, it says Satan is the God of this world. Because God did not originally create Satan to be the God of this world, but he created Adam to be the God of this world. But because of Adam's sin, then Satan became the God of this world. And 
Adam lost it. But God had a plan through Jesus Christ, sending Jesus to the earth, dying on the cross for our sins. He brought salvation and new birth back to man. And through Jesus, man is recreated in the image of God. Man is again brought up and seated with Christ in heavenly places. And man is given authority and dominion to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. And God, through Jesus, is bringing many sons back to glory and giving us his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for what he has done. Now, one of the things we mentioned last week is that when Adam sinned, he committed high treason against God. And in doing that, what that means is he turned over to Satan, God's enemy, the things that God had given him, his glory and honor, and especially, particularly, his authority and dominion to rule the earth. And man fell into a sinful state with Satan as his master. As we read last week in Romans six sixteen, it says, if you offer yourselves to obey him, you are slaves to the one you obey. So that when Adam obeyed Satan, he became a slave to Satan and to sin and death. And in Romans five twelve, it says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, And death through sin, in this way, death came to all men, because all sinned. You see, in that verse, it tells us all men are sinners, all people. And when we say men, biblically speaking, that is all people. Because actually, in Galatians 3, verse 28, I believe, it says that in Christ, there is neither male nor female, we are all one in Christ Jesus. So that is why we are all called sons of God. I know in today's generation, it is not politically correct to call everyone a son of God, but it is biblically correct. So we do not follow political correctness. We follow biblical correctness. Because in the Bible, there is, the Bible says there is neither male nor female. In Christ, we are all one. And therefore, the Bible says, if you are Christ, then you are sons of God. Amen? Amen. And so, death came to all men because all sinned. Because sin entered the world through one man and was passed down through the bloodline of that one man to all men. So with Adam's treason against God, man was separated from God. And that's where I want to take up today on a new lesson that we will continue this week. And this lesson is called the blood covenant. This is the blood covenant That God made with man. And so we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Man was separated from God because until Jesus came, what was man going to do? There was 4,000 years that passed between Adam and Jesus. 4,000 years had gone, went by between Adam and Jesus. And so what was God going to do? And not only that, how could God send Jesus into the earth? God had to have a way. God had to have a plan. And I love the scripture that it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7, where it says, let me find it real quickly for you. In 1 Corinthians 2, 7, it says, we speak of God's secret wisdom. 
secret wisdom in the Greek. And, you know, the New Testament was written in Greek and the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. And that word there where it says God's secret wisdom, that word secret wisdom is the Greek word translated or it's mysterion and it means divine secrets. And so I see it like this, that when Adam tempted Satan, I mean, excuse me, let me turn that around. When Satan tempted Adam to sin, Satan, and I had mentioned this last week, let, let's go back again. Satan wanted to have high position, authority, and glory. He wanted everything that God gave to Adam. God, before God created man, you can read in Isaiah chapter 12, verses 14. Let me correct that. Make sure that's correct. Isaiah, yes, actually chapter 14, verse 12. Isaiah fourteen twelve, through particularly verse 15, 12 through 15, you can read about Satan, whose name was Lucifer before he fell, that he said he would ascend into heaven and raise his throne above the stars of God, that he wanted to sit on the utmost or the highest heights of the sacred mountain. That sacred mountain, when we talked about heaven, a couple of weeks ago, God's throne is on the highest point of Mount Zion, the city of God in heaven. He is in the highest place. But Satan said he wanted to ascend above the stars of God and he wanted to sit enthroned on the highest heights of the sacred mountain of God. And in verse 14, Isaiah 14, 14, it says, I will make myself like the most high. But God d- had never created the angels to have that position or that glory or that authority. And because of that, Satan was cast down to the earth. He was stripped of the beauty that he had been given when he was created. And he was stripped naked. And he was cast down, made powerless, down to the earth. And so then God turned around and created man in Genesis 1, 26. He said, let us make man in our likeness and in our image. So there... Satan had said in Isaiah fourteen fourteen, I will make myself like the most high. But that was not something he could have or could be. But God instead created Adam and all mankind like the most high. God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And so God gave to man what Satan wanted, but could not have. God gave man, created man in his likeness and in his image. Satan wanted it, but could not have it. God gave man high position. Satan wanted it, but could not have it. God gave man authority to rule. Satan wanted it, but could not have it. God gave man glory and honor. Satan wanted it, but could not have it. So what did Satan do? Satan created a plot to take away from man what God gave man that Satan himself wanted. Satan was, you could say, green with envy. He was filled with jealousy toward man, having man having all that Satan wanted. He was jealous of man and he set out to take away from man everything God had given to man.
And so what did he do? He brought in a deception, a lie. And remember, we mentioned this last week. What was the deception? In Genesis 2, God, I mean, Satan said to Eve that if you eat the fruit of this tree, you will be like God. Now, that was the lie. Excuse me. That was in Genesis chapter three, Genesis three, five. Satan said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. That was the lie and the deception because he deceived her in forgetting that she was already created like God. She was created in the likeness and image of God. And she forgot that. And the Holy Spirit said this to me one time. He said, if you, if Satan can make you forget who you are in Christ and what God has given to you in Christ Jesus, that is everything from your salvation, your righteousness in Christ Jesus, that is your healing by his stripes, that is your prosperity and blessing from God. If Satan can make you forget who you are in Christ and what God has provided for you in Christ, then Satan can steal it away from you. And that's exactly what Satan did to Eve. Now, Eve turned and gave some of the fruit to her husband. Adam was not somewhere off on the other side of the garden, minding his own business. No, it says in Genesis three, verse six, that she also gave some to her husband who was with her. Adam was right there. He saw it all and he participated. And so you cannot blame just Eve for the fall. Actually, the New Testament says that Eve was deceived, but it does not say Adam was deceived. That's something to think about. That implies that Adam ate the fruit, not being deceived, his eyes wide open, and he failed to exercise his authority over the serpent and over Satan. So anyway, we see that Satan tempted mankind by tempting them to be like God. And I want to mention something else about that temptation that God wanted Adam and Eve to be like him. That was God's desire. That's why God created them in his own image. He wanted it. Of course, he didn't do something he didn't want. And so he wanted them to be like him. But when Satan brought the temptation to want to be like God, he also tempted them to do it in a way that violated God's law or God's command to do it on their own away from God or independent from God. You see, God was willing to give them everything. He had already given them the whole earth to rule over anything they wanted. It was theirs. They could have it. And so if there, if there was anything that wasn't there that they wanted, they first of all had the ability to create it, to speak God's word and to create it. But then they could also have asked God for it and God would have given it to them. But they were tempted to be drawn away from God and do something independently from God on their own and in their own ability. And in that way, they were separated from God, cut off from God. As we said last week, the lifeline or that umbilical cord that had connected God to man. It was a glory cord. It was a lifeline 
of the glory and the life and the light and the power of God flowing continually into man. And that was cut off because they acted independently from God. Now, that's a lesson for us to learn. Anytime you try to act independently from God, doing your own thing, getting what you want your way, you will be separated from God and the glory of God will be cut off from your life. God wants you to receive the desires of your heart. He wants you blessed. He wants you healed. But don't do it apart from him. Do it with him and in him. And that way, the glory of God will actually minister it to you. Anything you want or desire, if you need a new car, don't do try to get it on your own apart from God. Get it through God, through Christ, in Christ. And then you will receive it from Christ and you will receive it in the glory of God, in the blessing of God, in the favor of God. And then it will truly be a blessing in your life. Anything you try to get on your own apart from God will not be a blessing to you. It will end up being a burden. It will be a thorn in your flesh. It will be a trial to you if you get it apart from God. But if you get it in Christ, through Christ, from Christ, it will always be a blessing to you. It will be ministered to you through the glory of God. And so I encourage you in that, don't seek things on your own. Seek things through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we see that Satan tempted Adam and Eve and they followed that temptation. They partook of the fruit and they were cut off from God. They lost their position, their authority and their glory. And they turned it all over, like handing it right over to Satan. Now, This is the way I see Satan. He now can turn back to God and go, ha 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 God. What are you going to do now? God, what are you going to do now? I got your precious man. Ha 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 ha. I got that man that you created in your image and I got his authority. Ha 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 God. It's mine. It's mine. I can hear Satan taunting, mocking at God. Now, what was God going to do next? What is he going to do next? Well, as we started to read in 1 Corinthians 2, 7, that God had a plan. It's in First Corinthians 2, 7, it says, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory. And the Amplified Bible says for our glorification when before time began. Hallelujah. So God had a plan. It was hidden in God. And I see it as if you were to look at God and see there is a box in his belly, right in his stomach area, a square box. It's like a vault or a treasure chest. And on the front of it, it says top secret. Top secret. It was the secret plan of God hidden in God before time began. And so when Satan was mocking, ha 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 ha, God, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? God only spoke a sentence back in Genesis chapter three. God spoke to Satan in verses 14 and 15. Cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. That's for the serpent. And then in verse 15, it's directed to Satan. And I will put 
enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. He will crush your head. Notice it's one man. He, not they. He, one man. Who was that one man? That was Jesus Christ. So God began speaking and prophesying. He spoke his word into the earth. And this is the first prophecy about Jesus. It says he will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The first prophecy, God spoke it immediately. And for the next 4,000 years, God continued to speak words prophetic words into the earth and then the word became flesh yes john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us what word all those words prophetic words that god spoke for four thousand years oh hallelujah glory to god now that's all i have time to share with you today Come back tomorrow for the continuation of this teaching called the Blood Covenant. Thank you for joining me today. Now join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.